So I figured the perfect place to do astral travel bedtime stories would be in my bed. This may prove to be a gigantic mistake because there are two cats roaming about who are probably going to find some way to be cats because that's what they do. And my dress is kind of falling off. But anyways, so I also, well, I started uh, a journal. Uh, well, technically this was a book I was writing um, to my boyfriend to tell him all about all about how much I love him and stuff like that because I'm a really sappy, grody romantic. Um, I was just listening to power ballads all night, so um, yeah, there was some Bon Jovi played. I am not ashamed, but you know, during the when I started writing this book back in December, it was when I was really starting to experiment a lot more with. I think I had done some prior to it, but I was when I really started experimenting with the um, flying ointments. So uh, that started getting incorporated into the things I was writing to him. So this has become a very strange, strange love letter book. Um, at some point, he's probably be like, "Damn, this bitch is crazy." He would never say that in that term, in that way, but you know, um, to be like. I love you, I love you. And then I invoked Lilith and, you know, blood was everywhere. You know, love stories. You know, that's what they're made of. But I earmarked some of the uh, the things that were a little more pertinent uh, to things I wrote with in the realm of astral travel and how... So there's a misconception. People will be like, well, am I, you know, am I going to have hallucinogenic, hallucinate, hallucinations? Is this going to get me high or whatever? And really it's kind of about expanding your consciousness and how you think and what you think and really going into a lot of different areas of your mind and thinking about things in a way you probably have never thought about them before. So what I'm doing with this book is um, transcribing things into, this is going to be my astral travel journal, which is uh, awesome because it's uh, based on the David Bowie Starman uh, tarot card deck, so it's really pretty. I figured Starman, astral travel, uh, kind of tracks. So I'm gonna be transcribing some stuff in there. And then this is the uh, journal I'm using for my work with like Lilith and Lucifer and all that for the spirit, spiritual part of it or whatnot. So I'm trying to get my ADD shit together and because uh, otherwise it is like a clusterfuck like this where it's just like, and I love you, blah, 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 blah. And then the demons came and, you know, Belial told me to punch a Nazi, you know, things like that. Luckily. I think he understands and gets me, hopefully. <sighs> but so one of the first things I wrote, you know, kind of in, in the context of you have to think I'm writing a love letter to someone. So, you know, I, I started pondering with the question, what is love? How did love come to exist? It's a feeling you can't be told how to, you can't be told how to love. You just feel it and know it to be real. It probably predates the written word, or maybe even language itself. It dances throughout time like the cave paintings or Venus of Willendorf. Love transcends time, place, history, consciousness, science, the divine, and what existed before anything ever existed. Stardust. We are made of star stuff. Stars are love shining down upon us from billions of miles away. The night sky is my religion. It's everything that was, is, and will be. As my consciousness waxes and wanes in a place where time does and does not exist, the one truth I hold in all those between space is that I love you. I always have and I always will. So if you're watching this, baby, love you. So I get a little more poetic at this point and it goes on beneath the full moon in a time without time in a space without space between the worlds we meet and everything is just in its purest form, absolute unequivocal perfection. It's the inspiration that moves us to breathe, that gives us life, the blood throwing, flowing through our veins 
and the thoughts and synapses firing away, all the songs ever sung and every word ever spoken in every language that has ever existed. It's so clear to me now, love is energy, beautiful, sacred energy, soft and delicate like jasmine flowers. So that's kind of like how your brain starts to change and process things when you're working with flying ointments. You start to think about things in a, in a much different way. And each time is different. And, you know, you go, sometimes you go very deep. Um, sometimes it's a little, you're skimming the surface of things. And um, sometimes it's just like mind blowing. What the hell was that? Again, I'm talking about the concept of love. It's hard to quantify. I don't know that science and math exist to quantify such things. Perhaps a quantum computer might figure out some fancy multidimensional equation in some abstract interplanetary math that no one knows about yet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, like a lot of this, I just noticed a note that I wrote, and a lot of this kind of takes me back to my youth because like, sorry, my youth was pre-internet, uh, pre well, yeah, pre-internet. So I used to write a lot at night, like poetry, prose, whatever, stories, um, just things about my life. And I did that for like a solid 10 years from probably about the time I was maybe 14 on. Um, I stopped doing that regularly when I was about 24, maybe 25, almost 25. So, um, it's interesting when I go back and read some of that stuff from, from earlier in my life. Um, but I've always, I was always a night writer. I love writing at night. So working with the flying ointments at night for me and doing that kind of takes me back to the person that I was that's still part of me. So, hi, Corey. And as predicted, a cat is about to appear. Corey decided to make an appearance, so we're going to read together. So, last night I dreamt about how the sun and planets were created. I watched as it happened and everything came into form for from another universe. I held the piece of star in my hand and understood the magic of where humanity came from and traced the paths uh, of migrations of civilization through climatic changes like ice ages and things like that. Um, also, I noted this was after uh, working with mugwort and wormwood. So that's kind of you know, really how the brain starts to operate on these when you're working with entheogenic herbs. Isn't that right, Corey? Mellow tingles and kisses of fairy wings. My soul flies to you every night across the hedges and liminal spaces. The beauty of the dream of tomorrow and holding hands, dancing through time together, holding our universes, weaving intricate patterns of love and desire building foundations upon, upon stone one at a time until the dream of the future manifests. Days pass and I'm never without you, always by my side, spirits and souls intertwine. Doors are open in between spaces, follow me, dream with me, be my forever. Clear and bright paths light the, the way through the darkness. With the love of Belladonna, I write from the depths of my soul. I don't have to think or pause to write the words upon the page. They flow from my sacred being. Forever bound to mortal coils, intertwined in quantum spaces, philosophizing where time began, looping around to where it ends and will begin again. It's so beautiful to hold the, all the stars in the sky in your hands and blow a wish across the plains. Spirits soar upon the full moon, all things, all of them and always, always, forever. It's like dancing in fairy dust and snowflakes of gold silk and rainbows. All the darkness fades. The full moon inspires me to dream and be of magic. Everything is so bright. Sorry, I'm editing out a, a little bit of the, the personal stuff that I've written in here, so. 
Um, I have to pause and edit a lot. So this one's called Moonflower, which is, I think, about uh, Datora. So dreams and spirits come to me in, in between spaces. I was told I needed to release the dark spirit within me. I saw its face burst through my own reflection in the mirror. I don't know what this dark spirit is or where it comes from. I'm working with my ancestors, my spirit guides, and they appear from time to time and yeah, in dreams. Um, that's one thing, just sort of a little side note is that um, I don't talk about it often, but I do, the dead and dying do come and visit me in dreams to tell me things um, that are like interacting with the present. It's not like, um, I, and I can tell the difference. It's not like dreaming about someone who died. It's no, that person's here. They're, t they're interacting with you about something that's going on right now. And you can sense a different presence and a different energy in the dream. Um, so that's something that that is part of my my internal uh, landscape as well. So, um, so this is the first time I was working with Fly Agaric. So I'm not always of this world. Magic and entheogenic plants bridge the gap between the worlds and all the liminal spaces. I'm drawn to darkness, my own, and your light like a morning star flight flickering in the sunlight. I close my eyes and see the world inside the matrix of my mind. It's all connected. Most people don't just don't see it. Dreams are just other lives through the multiverse overlapping. We see ourselves and the s time simultaneously exists and stands still while whirling motions open portals. We are living history and the past is present and the future already happened And I have terrible handwriting and something and our, we're just waiting for multiverse ma manifestations. My handwriting gets a little bad. Um, I'm, if it weren't for doing these journals, I probably would have forgotten how to write by hand by now because I do everything on the computer. So um, anyways, moving along. So this is going to be some of the more recent ones. So I'm going to transcend, manifest, and become through this gnosis, rising, burning the world to the ground. In darkness I shall rise. I am here between the worlds. In darkness, the brightest star, des descending magnetic rainbows to the temple of Lilith and Lucifer's realm. I am becoming power, a god of my own reality. I get it now. It's too dark to see what I am writing. Let your fire burn forever in my soul. I am becoming one, all things, nothing, and everything. Opening portals you'll never know, you'll never see. So... Again, moving on to some more fly agaric. Uh, it took me a little while to, to get the formulation right. So, um, some days I'm an energy alchemist, transmuting plant energies into magic. There's been such a weird energetic frequency manifesting, glitches in the matrix, falling towards gnosis. Realities are shifting and breaking apart. The center cannot hold. We create the center, it exists, and is pulling together with universal thought strings, bits of information strung together throughout time and beyond time. Realms fold into shadows and fall away. Only the truly awakened can see in the dark. And then I do this scribbling thing. I don't know if you can uh, focus on it. I don't know what these are. Um, they're various symbols. I've written like this with these for probably 25 years now. I have no idea what language it is. If it is a language, what any of it means, but it just comes out sometimes. And then the doors opened and I knew exactly where I was. 
I've been exploring so many different realms, hijacking the multiverse, AI programming of reality. I've learned to navigate, explore, and experience. I'm becoming what I don't know yet, a psychonaut, astral explorer, soul traveler, or maybe I'm just really weird and bat crap crazy pants. I can feel the world changing, becoming something new, beyond the virus, beyond the matrix. A new world is emerging. I'm standing at the precipice of becoming, transcending, going beyond. It's natural, almost like a predator natural skill. There's so, no, so much we do not know about the human mind, reality, and the universe. There's so many planes of reality, and it remembers everything. Every word, every spoken, every thought, every dream, it's all there. Things are shifting so fast right now. The fail is thin on Walpurgis Night, which was April 30th. Uh, hacking the astral realm to build a portal between our worlds and dreams and hack the reality matrix. Planes of simulation disintegrate and we can push through and manipulate reality. It's the only the beginning of the change. The veil between the living, the spirit world, the ghosts and the machine, ascended masters, ancient deities, astral realms, and all that is possible. We can break the matrix, hack the code, and ascend to our own godhood. Transcendence. Escaping the confines of the fleshed body. Souls are eternal and can travel without these cumbersome meat suits. I decided to join us, so um, pretty close to the end of the video. Um, just going to end on one final thought. Once you see an experience, there is no turning back and nothing will ever be the same again. Very true. So that's just a little bit of... Hi, Mimi. Are you being squirmy? Oh, squirmy worms. Love you, Moon. Love you, Moon Child. Boop. And she's gone. So those are just some of my experiences. Um, I have a bunch more. I still haven't uh, transcribed yet, and some that are still up here. Um, more recent ones from the past few days that I have to jot notes down about, um, cause I'm really trying to keep a good record of this so I can kind of link things back and forth. But, um, this was our first installment of Astral Travel Bedtime Stories. I hope you enjoyed wandering around my crazy little brain. Anyways, have a lovely whatever time of day it is. Much love to you all, and thank you once again to my Patreon supporters. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.